This is Adam Kokus, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio. You're listening to iCannabisRadio.com. Welcome to American Weed Realm Radio. Uh, I'm Josh Stanley, your host. I'm here with my brother Jesse, the mustache man. Still rocking it. And we got Chris Stubbs here to start the show out with us, and Jennifer Murray for Science Corner. Hello. Howdy. Missed you guys last week, but I understand Jesse did one heck of a job uh, hosting the show. He did. Very good, Thank Jess. You, Thank, Thank you, you for that. It's good to have a week off. Um, I'm back and a little bit rested. <laughs> Uh, we have a great show tonight uh, planned for everybody. We've, we have a lot of questions, and, and as always, I want to thank uh, thank uh, Rebecca Brown and, and the CBD group. Um, actually, it's, it has a new yeah, it's name different. now. It's different, yeah. It's called... Uh, Pediatric. Pediatric Cannabis Therapy. Pediatric Cannabis Therapy. Yes. And I want to thank you guys. You send in uh, such wonderful questions, and um, so we're going to jump into it, because tonight... We're not going to have, as usual, we're not going to have a whole lot of time to fit everything in. We've got some very, very special guests on the show this evening. Uh, we're going to be uh, calling and talking to Dennis Perrone. Uh, Dennis Perrone, I think, if, if you don't know who he is, is a legend in his own right. Helped to fa- pass the first uh, proposition, actually co-authored the first proposition in California. Um, uh, amazing uh, gay rights activist and leader. Um, just an amazing human being in general. And then uh, we have a very special guest, Julia Rose. And I don't know if anybody's heard of Peter's page, uh, but it's Peter McWilliams. And uh, Peter uh, passed away back in 2000 um, without have, being able to have access to his, his medicine. Really a compelling story. But Peter lives on through Peter's page and through Julia Rose. And the work that she's done has just been incredible. Yeah. And we want to thank her for that. We're going to be very honored to have her on the show. So we'll talk to Dennis, and then we'll talk to Julia. I do have some bad news, however, about tonight's show. Dr. Shackelford, Ask Dr. Shack, will not be in the house tonight. Mm-hmm. He has some uh, issues that he needed to, to deal with, and we, uh, we certainly wish him the best. But uh, we did bring in the love doctor, Chris Stubbs. He'll be answering yeah. all your love questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 7.30 to 8, so. The love Scientific doctor. love. Scientific science love. Science love. So speaking of science, let's jump right into the nerdery here. And, uh, and you know, yeah, yourself. a lot of these questions are... Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> folks, the, people that have heard qu- these questions before, some of these questions are similar, uh, but that's okay. You know, the more and more people that continue to join this group and this this uh, pediatric children's group is really, really growing, and that's that's an exciting and fantastic to see. We're getting questions all the way from New Zealand. Wow, yeah. New Zealand, New Zealand, um, New Zealand. We got questions from Ooh. Scotland. Bless you. Sorry. Bless you, Jen. Woo. Very you cool. You're allergic to that weenie dog that was in here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's always uh, validating to see that come in from all around the world. I mean, this stuff travels really fast, and that's something that I've acknowledged over the years. It's incredible, you know? It you is. You can make a dent real quick. It's it's so, you know, just that's to bring that up, it it's, it's so cool because, you know, American Weed uh, on National Geographic is airing all over Europe and Australia and New Zealand and places like that, and we're getting all kinds of this uh, fan mail and support. Um from all over the planet. So what, what we've decided to do with the show in the next few weeks, we're going to start having people call in. We have a, uh, a mother of a Dravet mm-hmm. child in New Zealand who's at her wit's end and mm-hmm. uh, just a precious woman. And of course, it's the middle of the night there, but she said, I'm happy to stay up mm-hmm. and call in and, and talk about how she can't That's get cool. her daughter the meds. And if she comes over here, how do we you know, get, make her a Colorado resident? Is Dravet syndrome, is cancer, is Parkinson's, is MS, are all these diseases, are they different in a place that doesn't have medical marijuana certainly not and so nope. we, st- we tend to think of ourselves sometimes in a micro community in right. Colorado and then you right. know, we're fenced in and we feel like but just because we're so lucky to have laws like this and be able to, to to help the sick through cannabis treatment we don't even look at the United States as a whole sometimes and then we step back it's even true. further yeah. and we get a 40,000 foot view of the world yeah and 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 the world is looking at this and they're looking to us right now to set these examples so we're I'm really excited that we're getting this world coverage so let's Let's move into uh, to the first questions here. Certainly. Um, let's see. And, I, you know, forgive me because some of these questions may have been for Dr. Shackelford. Uh, we will get to those next week when he's okay. with us. Um, okay. Let's see. Here's a question. Science Corner. Can extraction method affect ratios? If not, 
then how can a clone from a mother plant with three to one CBD to THC genetics be altered to test at one and a half to one? But that was tested after it was made into oil. Right. Um, so can, can for the, the first question, can extraction, extraction method affect ratios? Yeah, I actually spoke with her about this uh, this week a little bit. And the method itself... You know, the solvent that you choose, a lot of the commonly used solvents have very similar extraction efficiencies. And the efficiency itself is not going to be, that's an overall measure of how much you pulled off the plant, how much was left, okay? So the ratio there is, doesn't change. Um, but the part of the plant that you're using can change that slightly. So if, you're, if you get the cola tested and you do the extraction from that cola, um, and you decarboxylate it, there's going to be yeah. some bit of change there, but it's representative of the test that you had before. Um, if you test the cola and then do a full plant extraction with trim, sugar leaf, stems, bud, everything together, all homogeneously mixed, that's going to change the ratio. Um, and I've got limited data on this from over the years, but that's what I've seen because the stems and leaves you know they all have different production ratios and so that that will alter, alter it by weight by weight mm -hmm. percentage slightly but um time of harvest has an effect as well and that's something i discussed with her um you know what, what are all the different things that kind of affect the ratio I mean, that's time of harvest. that's one of it the source material that you use okay mm -hmm. so if you ground everything up and had that tested before the extraction and then the oil itself that's going to be more in line than if you picked any single part and expected the final oil of the whole plant does that make sense yeah it does okay but so <clears throat> so so when we test flour mm -hmm. and then they make oil out of that but aren't the ratios usually pretty constant yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're yeah. unchanged. But right. if you take a bunch of different With parts flour. of a plant or right. a bunch of plants themselves, I mean, <clears throat> you're talking about a half a gram sample that we take into the lab. Right. You know, if right. you look at 20 pounds, I mean, plant to plant, that ratio is going to vary. And yeah. I guarantee you, if you sampled the plant totally in all those true. different places, um, you will find Top, varying middle, ratios. Bottom, now, it's yeah. kind of not going to change from 3 to 1 to 9 to 1, you know, but something like 1.5 to 1 to 3 point three to one like yeah that can feasible. definitely that's definitely feasible, feasible. Um, time to harvest so if you let something go a lot longer versus cutting cure. something really early <coughs> you want it to that's cure. yeah that's that's one part is just time at harvest and then how long you let it cure afterwards it can have um, a decarboxylation effect basically okay. you know the plants that go for uh, three to four to five week cure which is done um, you know we tend to see upwards of 5% delta 9, which in fresh cuts, you see minimal, you know, 1%, 1.2, 1.5. So those are some of the factors that can go into that. Um, you know, in the lab stringency guidelines and what their error ranges are play a role too. Mm -hmm. You know, if their calibration curve for one cannabinoid is not as strong or hasn't been recalibrated, versus another one the data GC might wobble LC. a bit more gc and that versus was tested on a gc exactly and gc is a gas. gas chromatograph right and using gas chromatography you know partially decarboxylates the sample if the chemist knows what's going on they'll know what that ratio is and they'll be adding a protective group or derivatizing to prevent that from occurring and can measure yeah. everything but that's rarely done and um in my experience, the numbers wobble a lot more. So you can see, if you combine those things, you can see how you can arrive at this. Certainly a three yeah. down to a one and a half. Yeah. But and her, her other question was like, did I waste my money? I mean, at least you have some information. It might not be the yeah. best, but at least you know the ratio is there. And you know, hopefully moving forward, you can treat the plant and the extraction process as, you know, you can never more have representative enough information of what you too. tested. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. <clears throat> um, I hope that answers that question. Yeah, that um, actually, a couple of people asked this the, a very similar <clears throat> question, so it just kind of rolled that into a, to one, so uh, we won't get into the other one. Another question that uh, that had come up and keeps coming up, mm -hmm. and and I, I'm even curious. I, I'm curious to hear about this. Okay, we have got we have an oil. Let's let's use um, Little Charlotte for example. Okay, okay Dervais syndrome patient, um, our first most precious. I got to say it, most precious yeah. little girl on the planet. Most so. 
we have a plant and and ratio that that obviously we we change the ratios up a little bit because it's like the weightlifting you don't do the same routine every time right but we have a plant that works you know especially good for her and i've been asked by several people in the cbd group and outside of this okay that you have this particular genetic now we do our best to mm -hmm. keep that genetic isolated to keep a, you know genetic drift or any of that you know from happening to our plants because it's a highly adaptable plant. but rem remember how long that it's taken you to get the genetics you have it took years. me two years. It took two, me two years. years. So people have to understand that. I, they, but and, and that's a great point. Yeah. That's actually a great point. I mean, point. this people is a People just long say, "Well, can't I coming. just breed a, a CBD plant?" And I go, right. "Well, you know, I, it took me two years of oh, yeah. a that's lot right. of trial mm -hmm. and a lot of error." Right. And I'll, I mean, more error than than anything <laughs> else, you know. Well, and you just don't know what's in the genetic exactly. cassettes. But, but people want to know how how do you keep that exact genetic? How do you keep that copied? You know, and and the answer I've been giving people is really you don't. I mean, unless you can get into the realm, which is what I want you guys to talk about of of tissue culture. Yeah, and that's something <clears throat> that's something that's out there. Um, it's a dream of mine. I've got some intellectual property around that that I've been working on for years. Um, but there's several groups have, that have engaged other plants and stuff like this. And, you know, the reality is it's like humans. They age, you know, and you cannot keep a strain on forever. The mother gets tired. The babies yeah. get tired. Um, there are ways to freeze that in time and go back to that stock. Um, but as we know it today it's nearly impossible for us to do that and so um you so, know so wouldn't you you would use different genetics and you would mix concentrates and then you would make standard ratio concentrates i mean that's that's one of the I mean, end right end products but his right. question's really geared towards the plant right but ultimately but. that's how we can get around the fluctuation in the plant is by mixing <clears throat> different um, ratios of oil. If you have a high THC oil, you mix it with a high CBD oil and you go from there. Right. That's what and, I'm talking and, about. And yeah. Be before we had you guys, okay, uh, the, the real, and I'm sorry, the real and only lab in Colorado, um, before, we, before we did have you, um, we would run into problems all the time. If we would, let's say we'd lose a genetic, a genetic mm -hmm. would get a disease, but, but a, a cancer patient relied on this particular strain you know we didn't we didn't we never had right. anything to back that up and right. now now that we have you we're able to go in and say okay these are the levels that are working yeah. for you and formulate and formulate right. and formulate right. yeah well, that's what I was like. you know the thing the other thing that's wise is to have somebody in there that knows botany and knows plants I mean that's rare still yes, yes. We'll have somebody totally. that knows of course every, every the, grower on the history of the planet they they grow the best medicine oh, and they've been growing for 20, 20 years and it's all kosher you know been growing since the day plants. that amendment 20 passed yeah. and that's all the longer i've been growing <laughs> right. um but they yeah i mean the, re <laughs> the reality <laughs> totally. is that there are you know there, there are reason that you can find an ak-47 and that's an ak-47 or an r4 is an r4 because somebody has taken the time to selectively breed that and back breed it and balance those chromosomes so that you have a much higher rate of cracking seeds and finding that same or very similar strain right um you know sagamartha's flow for example is one of my favorites has been for years and you can you know there's tons of it all over the state um and it is so similar that I can tell immediately that's Sagamarthas and it's not shorts, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and those guys have taken a long time and I know some breeders in the state that do the same thing. I mean, they are hermits. They do not want to be involved in this large scale stuff for the most part. Mm -hmm. They'll do some consulting. They're under their own guys, but they've taken a lot of time to ensure those genetics. And that's the other way around it. Most people, the first, second generation cross, yeah. you know, you end up with <clears throat> a wash of seeds that comes out of those and you'll tend to go through a laborious process of selection um, and profiling and then grow up those adults, maybe keep moms around for a bit, clone off of them and you're done. Yeah. And so it's definitely a quagmire, but it can be done. It can be done. And it and, takes and, generations and to do it. And I want to talk to you about some of your uh, your ideas on tissue cultures because <clears throat> that's really where we need to move in with this. Because this this genetic that we have right here, I mean, is, is even as good as we can take care of it, it's not going to last forever. Yeah. And it has to last forever. Right. Uh, you know, this is Charlotte's lifeline. These are a lot of these children's lifeline, you know, especially <clears throat> the high CBDs. Um, so uh, we'll, as we move into that, um, you'll keep us posted. But the, 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 Yeah, the, there's, I mean... 
just a thought on that. There's there's a lot of publications out there on plant tissue culture, and it's very doable. And you can go. It's it's laborious. It can be expensive. You need to have sterile conditions. I mean, it's really got to be a dedicated project, and you've got to have a couple of people on it at all times, mm -hmm. um, because the propensity for those to mold and um, screw up along the way is huge. And so, but don't you think it's the future mm -hmm. though? For, oh, it's for completely standardization. The future. I mean, you got to think about the giant seed, seed bank that's going on in uh, what was it, Greenland? Yeah, um, and Sweden in, as well. In Sweden, yeah, and they're you know just stockpiling all this stuff, and part of it involves tissue culture. Mm -hmm. um, there are definitely legitimate ways to do it, and it is the future of what's um, going on in a lot of cases. But you look at a company like GW Pharmaceuticals; they've been working on this stuff for the last you know what upwards of fifteen oh, years. Yeah. And they've not only stabilized specific strains and have activated the minor cannabinoid genetic cassettes, along with that comes terpenoid and flavonoid cassettes too. You know, right. a lot of the high CBD strains smell and look like turd because they, <laughs> they've been selected right. against. Yeah. You that's, know, that's, whereas that's the Delta right. 9 or the THC acid strong strains have, you know, carried that cassette with them. But it's not until you go back in genetic history. Um, and get out of the gene pool with all these modern medical strains right. that you start to see the minor cannabinoid ratios. And that's what they've, they've done. And they've stabilized those and can genetically monitor what's going on. And then their tissue banks and all that follows right along suit. So right. if, if you're going to make it you know, in for the long haul, you kind of got to use all these pieces and parts of biotechnology to their greatest degree, right. or else you're not going to hit it. Well, and that's, <clears throat> see, and that's the difference, okay, between medical cannabis and recreational cannabis. Because recreational, what are you doing? You're constantly breeding for the higher THC. Mm -hmm. You don't really care about your flux or your change. Or yeah. ratios. Okay? Or ratios. Or other cannabinoids. You do, it, it's, right. it, well, it's, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And for what we have to do, I mean, this is... Uh, you, you mentioned long haul. We're, we're in it for the long haul. Yeah. These pa these patients, uh, they rely on it. They need it. Well, and, and people like in, in Michigan, for example, the, you know, Rebecca and, 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 and these folks, they don't have you guys. Right. You know, and we uh, we always have to remember that because, and, and, and I, I hate, I don't want to sound disingenuous. I don't want to sound, when I say this, I hope the listeners here understand what I'm saying. But I have to believe that with the, the, the monitoring, the level and the ratios that we're giving, and I, I use Charlotte as an example a lot, but that we give Charlotte and, and the success that she's having with you know 90% of her seizures gone, um, there, other states, other people that are trying the CBDs and trying their own ratios, they're on their own. And that yeah. may be why they're not experiencing such, uh, such, <clears throat> such uh, incredible benefits, which I find so unfortunate. It is. And that's that's the reality of this. I mean, we're very fortunate to be where we're at, and we can translate a lot of that information. Um, but you know, I'm at a loss because there's only I so know, much I know. you can do. And Th there is. If you, you know, it's access will come. I, it, well, it as is, long as we it's keep be spreading a battle, the word a battle, and yeah. keep educating people, it will. It's coming. You know, I just I think about it a lot, and I, <clears> you know, I know Jesse, you, you and I talk about this too because we get these emails all the time yeah. from these parents, like the the one I got. They're desperate today from the the uh, woman in New Zealand saying, you know, my daughter is dying, right, and I can't do anything about it. She mm -hmm. couldn't even, you know, she can't put her on a plane. It has to be a special medical uh, situation because mm -hmm. of the amount of seizures that this little, wow. little girl has. And <clears throat> and it's, like, again, Gervais syndrome, cancer is the same in New Zealand as it is in the United States. And access, right. it just breaks my heart. So yeah. uh, hopefully one day. Uh, now now we're just dreaming. So let's, let's, let's not be sad. Let's, let's get on to the next question. <clears throat> This comes from Kim, and Kim, I want to thank you for your question. Kim is in Canada, so that's cool. great. offshore Hello, question. Hello, Canada. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she said, I'd, li I, uh, I'd like to find out about various extraction methods you've tried. I'm up in Canada, and I'm growing for two cancer patients. I'd like to try a more safe extraction method. What method do you suggest for good, clean extraction with safety as a priority? You guys are terrific. Keep mm. up the good work. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Well, um, this is something we visited a couple of times now, and um, 
you know, especially the children in the home, but regardless, I think a grain alcohol, ethanol is the best extraction method. There's no adulterants in that like there are in rubbing alcohols and other solvents that are um, used to make you smell and pick up on a spill or a leak. And so, um, you know, when you go to any of the very volatile chemicals like butane or propane, you've got explosive risk right away when you're doing the purge step, when you're evaporating the solvent. And that's that's the biggest risk there. Um, and that's the biggest risk with any of it. Even with ethanol, you know, when you're doing your cleanup steps, if you have a big vat with a lot of surface area to volume ratio, like I've talked about, you can evaporate that outside in the sun. Okay. And, you know, within 24 hours, 48 hours, you've got um, really close to where you want to be. You don't need to sit there and boil it on your stove. You know, get it outside, away from everybody, and let it do its thing. Um, that's the safest way I can recommend anybody does it. Otherwise, you just don't know what's going on. You yeah. know, you don't know how much butane you have in there, or propane you have in there, or hexanes. All those are have a secondary health risk because your body can't process those molecules. Ethanol, if you spill some on you or gobble a bunch up, you'll be drunk, and that's about it. You know, right. and, and, right. and that is, you know, obviously toxic, um, but it's all the adulterants in those molecules or in the, those chemicals and solvents that aren't USP or chemically pure that or, you know, a secondary source of a health risk. So, so ethanol you, all the way. Unless you know what Everclear. you're doing. Yeah, it's it's food grade Everclear. Everclear. I do have another question. Go for it. Uh, someone asked me today about their extraction methods, mm -hmm. and they're doing just a little bit, but they were talking, and I didn't have the answer for this, but they said, you know, uh, isopropyl is so much cheaper yeah. than Everclear. But again, it's got the adult. Yeah, yeah, it's got the, yeah. And it's used topically, but your body cannot process that. Yeah. It's like methanol. Methanol is even more dangerous. You will go blind. Yeah. You know, there's a reason why they put that stuff in there. Uh, a, so it's not abused. And I mean, bless their heart, but homeless people, that's a huge problem. They're drinking methanol and isopropanol, and your body cannot process that. It's much more Is toxic. That right? Yeah. Well, you, You'll go blind. You can't see. It's kind of like what taste. Mom said. If you keep doing that, Jesse, you're going to go blind. Well, no. and that's a problem with some moonshots, too. Something else, can, John. You yeah. can make those <laughs> other... <laughs> <laughs> I just caught that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mom had to but, keep reminding Jesse all his life. Right. Jesse, you're going to go blind, son. Get out of your room. Yeah, yeah. Get out, out of there. Yeah. One arm's stronger than the other. Yeah, he's like, but I got diarrhea. No, you don't. Get no, out of there. Um, yeah. But ten yeah, more I mean, kids need to use that bathroom. A lot of those uh, solvents are, are, are really dangerous, and there's ways to do it. Um, there's a couple extractors out there that you can you know, use in the home, people use them for making colognes and flowers and essences and all that kind of stuff that can be used for this purpose, but they use uh, gases. You oh, and you can, you know what, more and more companies now are building extraction machines. Yeah. So CO2 extraction. Um, so more and more of those are, are uh, being readily available. So, and small scale and large scale extraction machines so what, what are your thoughts on co2 extraction i mean i know there's a few machines out there some you know the well they haven't they haven't um brought it down on a small scale they're all like really huge, huge. and they start at fifteen thousand like kilogram column right and so yeah, 15 20k gets you into it but, but once they bring clean. that down they're, they're clean they're that's the, that's the question your next CO2 best is it, your yeah is co2 that's yeah. the that's the cleanest way to do it um the only unfortunate part is the, the is one of the people that i know that has one yeah, I wouldn't trust. Uh, and well, I'm just talking about people that can purchase it and do it at home. Like you can buy oh, a see. butane, tamesium extraction device for a thousand dollars, and, you know, and that and makes sense for people that are going to be creating medicine for their kids. I mean, that is not a big expense. We all know how much pharmaceuticals are. Right. So I'm and just I think saying. Rebecca on a smaller, recently did that. Is that right? I think I saw in the group. Did she? I don't know if she actually got I, I one or not. She just, that's something she just, I passed along. I think she just did some. And, yeah, and she was thrilled. She, she did was. great. Yeah. yeah. That's, she that's, said it was see, easier than she and thought. And that's a closed system, so it's yeah. re, it's recycling solvent. There's still um, an evaporation step, but you can put a transport solvent on the other end of it. So you put a little Everclear in the vessel. It does the extraction. 
and um, you purge the butane back into the original canister, whatever gas you're using, mm -hmm. and your oil's stuck in the Everclear. So mm -hmm. you then pour that out and do the evaporation steps. Yeah, so there's so um, many things. So there's there's quite a few, but you got to make sure you talk, you know, make if you're in a medical state, some of those states still have laws against using solvents and extractions and concentrates. So you just, you know, you it's all illegal on some level. You got to yeah, pick but your you know what? Do what you need to do to if save your lives. If your kids is sick, you got to do what you got to do. So if you're mm -hmm. interested in any of those that I talked about, just uh, um, contact me. <laughs> <laughs> at, <laughs> Jennifer at canlabs.com. G E N I F E R at C A N N L A B S dot com. And I'll try to get you out as much information on what I know and what we have here in Colorado. Uh, you know, another just, question, real quick. I want to get this in. Uh, for sure. Can you, when you do your test, can you tell what extraction method they do? Just uh, from physical. He's really good at that. Yeah, actually. from a physical assay, I mean, I've seen I've seen so many things. I can tell, you know, there's the only the color of the oil. Yeah, the color of the oil is huge. Um, uh, the smell, I can, you know, it's it's not that there's a huge amount of residual solvent, but that coupled with the terpene and flavonoid profile and the cannabinoids, you can tell what's been done. Um, sometimes I get tricked on it, but I can tell if it's butane versus propane versus CO2 versus mm -hmm. ethanol versus isopropyl. Mm -hmm. Now, cleanup steps that they do after that um, can definitely throw me through a loop here and there. And it depends on what they've done. Some of them are totally odorless. Some of them smell really weird. Um, and that's just because you've pulled some molecules and left others. But mm -hmm. yeah, I can generally yeah, he's tell. He's very what's good up. at that, actually. And we really want to do quantitative analysis on it. But it's again, it's so expensive. It's our next step. So expensive. But, well, I, and I, things we're talking about, and we're going to be talking about. There's, we have a long road ahead of us, guys. Yeah, for and sure. And for you viewers <laughs> out there and people, you know, watching, it's just a. We're just getting out of the gate here. Um, it's it's exciting, and we think about how far along we are in Colorado, and we're still in the dark ages. And then and then That's think crazy. isn't that crazy? But think about this. This this is this is what blows <clears throat> my mind. This is like I mean going back into the 1700s or 1800s, where mothers in Michigan or any other state are having to do their own extractions at their house for their child who is extremely sick. I mean. What's wrong with us? And they could go down the pharmacy and get Oh, heroin. yeah. You know? They can go down the pharmacy and get mm -hmm. opiates or oh, benzos yeah. or whatever it is Alcohol. that they put these kids on. Yeah. And they're sitting in their kitchen making a medicine that's saving their kid's life. And all the while, they could they could face prison time for it. That, see, that, oh, well, that lights my wick. In 100 years, you'll we will look back at this and it will be the Salem witch trials so of you our think. time. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. we'll be like... I can't believe we were we we're doing this the same way now. You look back and you're like, wait, we were burning what? With who and how and <laughs> uh -huh. why? Because of this, that, and the other thing? Yeah. The same way so we're going to be like, wait, we imprisoned how many people because they were smoking a plant? Yeah. yeah but uh, if, so if, so if, that, if that happens in 100 years, then what we're doing here mm. is Well, well it. I'll be gone, well, thank remember. God. They have to yeah. keep those at. prisons full of nonviolent drug offenders to meet their budgets. Well, yes, they do. publicly owned prison systems. Well, we talked about this, and that makes money because they send these prisoners out <laughs> and they bill yeah. them out at eight to fifteen dollars an hour and those prisoners get they get 30 cents for their release stipend i mean and <clears> it's <throat> traded on the new york stock exchange it's legalized slavery folks oh, and then we're heading into a situation think about this i mean okay obama has been no walk in the park uh, he more more raids and arrests for medical marijuana uh patients and distributors than two Two terms of George Bush, okay? Which you know, is flabbergasting. Which it blows my mind, okay? F absolutely flabbergasting. But, wow. but, but then, but then, what, well, okay, but then, then let's look at the alternative. So we're seriously in the year 2012 looking at potentially voting a man in that wears magic underwear and believes Jesus partied with the Indians. Yeah, I was raised more Seriously? Than, hey, I know you were. I know you were. <laughs> we've, we've had that. We've had I that don't that. wear the underwear. Yeah, you, 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 get, you can't wear those magic undies in the studio. They're not going to save you. You know, and I, I have a lot of friends who were raised Mormon, but we're seriously, we're seriously thinking about him I'm leading the free world? It. Okay, good, good. Yeah. 
Because the minute he gets elected, I, I'm on the first train out. Can I talk about donating blood, Please. though? Yeah, we just have one we're minute. we're talking about giving. Um, the cannabis community is donating blood from the 17th, which is today until the 31st at any Bonneville's. Uh, blood center and if you please could go donate blood and give the code 7165 so they know that it's part of the cannabis community it's part of um, you know what we can do to give give back so and uh, that I went to and gave blood today so please do that yes that's very important um, for the for the cannabis com- community to go out and educate and continue to be leaders in the community we have to we have to show up you know we've got 100%. to show people that we're socially responsible uh, that's all the time we have right now for science corner we're going to take a break i want to thank you guys as usual you guys are brilliant and wonderful and my heroes <laughs> and and all <laughs> of you guys out there keep sending your questions in we're going to yeah, be back definitely. taking a break we're going to come back with uh with dennis perone uh folks so uh we're really looking forward to that conversation we'll see you here in just a few minutes Let's face it, rules and regulations are complicated, especially in the field of medical marijuana. Let Medical Marijuana 101 help you get through the compliance process. We can also explain to you your employment requirements, your employees, and your business. But our work doesn't stop there. Our experience in cultivation ranges from the design of grow rooms to the diagnosis and resolution of grow problems. Visit us at www.medicalmarijuana101.com or call 303-388-7706. That's 303-388-7706. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Run on grass.com. Hi, Josh Stanley here from National Geographic's American Weed. I'm here with my brothers, and we've just recently put together a foundation in Colorado to allow for cancer patients and other patients of debilitating conditions to be able to get a hold of cannabis-based oil that's just about free of charge. I've just about had it with seeing sick patients suffer needlessly just because they can't afford the proper medication. That's what the realm of caring is going to change. Visit therealmofcaring.com. The website will be complete and up on 420. 20 of 2012. But until then, please contact any of us Stanley Brothers directly through email. You can get us at gratefuljosh at hotmail.com. Now come on, Colorado. We need to take care of each other. Join the realm. That's realmofcaring.com. Thank you so much. Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack, Suite 110, on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. California's Attorney General has determined that the Repeal Cannabis Prohibition Act will save hundreds of millions of dollars from our overburdened justice system while creating hundreds of millions in new tax revenues from new sustainable jobs and industries that are friendly to our environment. But we can't do it without your help. We are seeking your donations to get on the ballot. Please go to repealcannabisprohibition.org to learn more about how you can help. It's time to end the war on cannabis in Hemp in California. It's time to end the madness. Paid for by Sensible California's Incorporated. The law offices of Vets and Maiden and Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at Warren at Hi, I'm Josh Stanley. And I'm Jesse Stanley. Two of the brothers here from National Geographic's American Weed. And we'd like to invite you to come into our dispensaries in Dispensary in Colorado Springs. Come in for the most pure organic strain selection in Colorado. It's all hand grown by the Stanley Brothers, especially for our patients. So come in and visit us at our two locations, East Platte and West Colorado. And remember, always be kind to each other. 
The clinic is proud to announce the third annual Clinic Charity Classic Golf Tournament, benefiting the Colorado MS Society. The tournament will be held at City Park Golf Course this coming August 11th. There will be some incredible prizes, including an opportunity to win a trip for two to Hawaii. The trip includes airfare, eight days, seven nights at the Ritz-Carlton Kapalua, including four rounds of golf and $1,500 spending cash. Thanks to the incredible support of Weed Maps, Heady Glass, Rocky Mountain Hydro, T Meyer and Stitch, Dixie Elixir, and MMJPrinting.com, we're able to provide awareness to this incredibly difficult condition that so many Coloradans are suffering from. The event will be covered extensively by our favorite industry media outlets Culture Magazine, The Hemp Connoisseur, Cush Magazine, and of course the amazing people at iCannabis Radio. Please register at theclinicolorado.com or at any of our six convenient locations throughout the Denver metro area. Welcome back to American Weed Realm Radio. I'm Josh Stanley here, your host, here with the mustache man, Jesse Stanley. What's up? Uh, I thought uh, that uh, Science Corner session went really, really well. And I wanted to touch just a little bit on... I wanted to bring something up real quick. We didn't get a chance to get to, and we're going to get to it next week. And, you know, one of the, one of the first rules that we've always said about this show is that nothing is sacred in the realm. And, uh, and, and I had a friend call me, a very, uh, very close friend, an older medical Where marijuana patient. Dennis? Oh, you got Dennis? Yep. Okay, we'll jump to that in a minute. Dennis, how are you? This is Josh Stanley. Hey, I with, Josh, how you doing? I'm doing good, sir. It's great to talk to you. It's an honor to speak with you, actually. Thank oh, you for Thank you, Josh. Thanks for agreeing to come on the show. How are you feeling? I heard you had the flu recently. Yeah, I had the flu. I couldn't go to Washington, but Washington is not my favorite city anyway. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm over it now. You know, yeah, Dennis, I've I've followed you for so many years, and and uh, been you know kind of like a hero. We, uh, I was actually a, one of the co-authors of the first bill here and put the first political action committee together, and I kind of followed your footsteps. So I know what you mean. Washington D.C. meeting with senators and congressmen. Some of them are great, but most of the time you want to take a shower, right? Yeah, you really do. <laughs> you just you know they're full of shit. Every and single one of them. And they're tired. So in the, one one way to you, another way to the other. Guys, they're they're not true to themselves. No, they do, and they do it at the same time. It it, it yeah. baffles me. I mean, I've sat at the same table and watched a congressman say three different things. And I know, just, a little contradictory. Well, yeah, and that's what I, I let's get into that a little bit. I mean, you were you were the reason that the proposition passed in the '90s in California, and and you had to I, I had to go in and do a crash course because nobody else was going to put a political action committee together. And what most people don't understand is that I got called into the governor's office and our attorney general, who was a Nazi, and said they said you either get a bill passed to to define in statute what the Constitution in Colorado says, or we're going to come prosecute you the next day as soon as session's over. So we had really no choice. So we got pushed into politics. How did you? Well, how did you do it? Well, we all are kind of pushed into it. You know, uh, I, mean, I wouldn't choose to do this. The reason I, I did it mainly because I got busted. So I had a, I had to get out of it. <laughs> I got I got busted. I can't tell you twenty two times or something like that for marijuana. <laughs> and uh, every time I get busted, I have to mount a campaign, treat myself out of jail, number one, and to change these laws. These laws are wrong. I always thought these laws were wrong, and they should they should have been changed 25 years ago. Oh, uh, 25 so, years ago marks the... No, actually, it was 35 years ago marks the date that we found that cannabinoids had cancer-eating effects. Um, yeah, yeah. You have that's a, you, when it should have been. You bet it should have been, and it still should be, and that's why we keep fighting, and that's why... You know what? It, it started with, with folks like you. You guys started the revolution, and none of us are stopping, but you spurned all of us, you know, me, my oh. brothers, um, you know, the shows and the radio shows and all the things that we do. Uh, it was really... A lot of it has to do with, with your leadership, so I want to thank you for that. Well, I thank you for t- picking up the banner and keep going with it, because I couldn't do it all myself. I, I, I gave you hope. Uh, and that's what Harvey Milk taught me. Uh, give people hope, and they'll go with it. But if they don't have hope, you, you, you're defeated. When I when I was doing Prop 215 and Prop W, even, uh, there was no hope around. People said, oh, these laws are never going to change. We're going to die with these laws. I said, no, no. We don't have to. We can change it. And uh, I just changed the rhetoric about marijuana. I, I called it what it was. It was medicine. It's been in medicine for thousands of years. It, it, this government list is a medicine. It is a medicine. If it's a medicine and it helps people, why is it illegal? 
and, and I asked the question, and then, then people answered, it's, it shouldn't be, and they, they came back. And I, I asked the question of ourselves, too. What are we doing with this? Are we going to get high? People say, oh, I get high. But what is this high? And what were you before you got high? Were you low? <laughs> and uh, so it begs the question. We have to question ourselves through our role models. What are we doing? Why are we getting high? And uh, what is going on in our lives? And but but you know. So uh, I asked the question about not only the people, but all of us, all of the people who use it. Ask the question of what you, what are you doing? And uh, we, if you analyze it, you're you're, you're a medicine. You're relieving depression. You're feeling better. That is a reason. That's a medical reason. And uh, people are getting Prozac. They don't. They do it to feel better. And that's a medical thing. So every. You know, this is where you and I are in total agreement. Um, it, it, you know, you said, "What were you low?" And I've heard you say before. Well, in other words, you were depressed. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just it's, so anytime somebody uses it, 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 it really is a medical reason. So people can try to, you know, so no, it's just because I choose to use. Well, I tend to believe that it is a medical reason. But, you know, the funny thing about this is, is we haven't the medical uh, uh, standards on this have, haven't even been set yet, Dennis. I mean, we're finding yeah. new things every day that this amazing plant works for. It's just These I, amazing plants. You know, why couldn't they choose something else to be illegal? Because <laughs> this plant is so amazing. And it has the potential to cure the planet of all the cells, oils, and not just depression, but everything. And it's, it's how you see life. It makes you, it causes self-analysis. And self-analysis is good because you think about what you're doing. You think about what you're doing, you're going to do the right thing. And that's what I think. The whole world could profit by this, doing the right thing. You know, we smoke a joint and we think, well, maybe it's not a good idea to bomb people. <laughs> Maybe it's not a good idea to have those, those military. Maybe it's not a good idea to give the police uh, a, a rain, rain over the people. And so when we think, it's good. And uh, I think if we replaced alcohol with marijuana, we would have a better planet. In a oh, world. Absolutely. absolutely, we would. You know, I mean, uh, how many how many uh, liver cirrhosis of the liver deaths do you see? Due to yeah, alcohol, no, how many, how many driving, you know, drunk? Uh, I mean, it's an absolute. It's like a, it's like an. I call it oppositeville, the United States, when we look at this. And you think about the medicinal aspects of it, sure. But look at the industrial aspects of it. Look at the biofuels. Look at the uh, the lumber that can be created. I mean, it's just a. It, it is a planet saver, and you don't need to rotate crops. I mean, it puts nitrogen in the soil. It's it's a it's a God given miracle, and we're 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 not using it. So we just have to learn how to talk, talk to ourselves and talk, speak the language of the white people, uh, the white folk, you know, uh, speak the language of the, speak their language. Uh, and it's a medicine, it, it always brings a medicine, and people don't want to deprive people of medicine. And, you know, they, they try to demonize this recreational marijuana. What is it? They can't even define it, but it is bullshit. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as recreational they just try to minimize our pain and our suffering, and they're trying to trivialize it. You know, oh, but, uh, you are so right, Dennis, and, and you know what, I... I, I have to say this, and I'm going to catch flack even for agreeing with you on this, but this is what I've been saying, too, for years. When we take our cancer patients, and Dennis, I don't know if you know about the realm of caring, but we have a, a nonprofit organization that my brothers and I donate uh, the, the uh, Phoenix Tears of the Oil to uh, cancer patients, MS patients, Dravet ch uh, syndrome ch kids for the non-psychoactive portions of the plant for free, and that's what our program does. And uh, when, when we take our patients on an outing or something, and if we take them, for example, to a pot culture event like a you know a Kush convention or something like that it literally makes them cry when they turn when they look at this and, and see uh, you know the the rap music and all and, and all that's fine don't get me wrong I, I'm not yeah. saying it's bad but it, it they literally look inward and go goodness you know I wouldn't I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for this plant and mm -hmm. and this is the way these people are celebrating it well I'm proud of you Josh for carrying on the message and uh, I'm really proud of you doing this, everything you're doing, and keep it up because uh, we need a lot more warriors like you and and people like you, you know. And uh, we, we, you can see how it's going now. It's, it's not going to turn and go backwards. It, we are going to see legalization in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. And I think even the next term, Obama's going to reschedule it. He, he, he's so much forced to it. I don't think he's going to do it at benevolence. 
he's going to be forced to reschedule. You think? And Congress is ready. We have 190 votes in Congress to cut off the DEA funding. 190, 227 wins. Wow. So we have 190 congressmen from the states that have legalized medical, medical marijuana, and it's just a question of time before we win. And so keep the hope alive, and don't have, don't let your guard down. <clears throat> we run the marathon. It's been a 40-year marathon, for <laughs> me anyway. It's been 40 years, and, and for those 40 years, our people have really taken the cruising. We've taken the lumps. We've, taken, we've, we've seen our people in jail. They've forfeited their homes and their children, and it's just wrong what's happened to us. But we could be, be returning the count the corner and just know it and, uh, and just be like, one or two years, we'll be out of this, this terrible war, and we'll, we'll be victors, and history will be kind to us. Hey, amen. Amen. I, I mirror that. You know, there's no, I just don't, Dennis, I don't think you can put the genie back in the bottle, the water back in the dam. It's, no. and, and what we've done, what we've done is, is followed on your, your heels. And we've, what I preach is not, not straight activism all the time because, you know, that goes, you know, against misunderstanding. Instead, we educate. We become educators. And through the education process, we start to see people do complete 180s. You know, on, on this you form. yourselves too. What were you doing when, when you educate yourself? What are you doing when you get high? What are you doing? And so, when you answer that question without just trivializing it, you'll understand that it's very important. That your mission is very important. That not just getting high. Your mission is to raise consciousness mm. around you. In the sixties, we the first thing they did when they could turn down the pot is you turn your best friend on. You, mm -hmm. you, you, now, I'm on a mission, turn as many people on as we can. Turn as many people into pot as we can to raise the consciousness of the world. Mm, absolutely. It's a quick, quick consciousness fix. Through, through education. You know, that's the... That's, that's and, the yeah, and through pot. Yeah, through, through, of course. Look at look at look at all the look at the things we've done. Just I mean, as a community, even and I'm just going to brag on Colorado, you know, just to uh, uh, you know, I have people that that would walk in and and protest outside of our medical marijuana facility in downtown Denver when we first opened, what four or four and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and they come in and protest, and you know what I do? I I would order them pizza. And, uh, and 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 feed them, and then I'd go out and, and, and talk to them. You know, I'd have yeah. full on Coca Colas and everything, and and you know what happened? Uh, a couple of the protesters ended up being our patients and still are today. Here we go. Yeah, we can turn our enemies around. But it's really easy to do. Just get them high. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, that's my method. We want to turn them around and get them high. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they don't understand what we're doing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, uh, my goal is to get as many people on pot as I can. That's my major goal right now. <laughs> Bless so, your heart. <laughs> it's a good goal. It's a great <laughs> goal. And what you've been through, uh, I mean, I... Just following your history, Dennis, I got about to you. Uh, just thinking about all the the people that are trying to that have tried to tear you down, that have tried to defame you, that have arrested you. Your perseverance is magic, my friend. And I want they to thank you. Done. They try to malign me. They try to beat me up. They beat they beat me up. They, they shot me. They try to kill me. But I'm I'm so very resilient. Mm. I wish I could say that about Harvey Milk, my mentor, my my best friend. He was killed, or you know, I'm still carrying on his his legacy of giving people hope. We did a monumental thing in San Francisco. We did what no one else did. We 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 got gay people to come out of a spare closet, and they people say they're just like us. They're not so mysterious, and we changed the way attitudes of gay people, mm -hmm. and that's never been done because. Everyone thought, oh, gay people will beat them up. And, uh, they, they come come on you, you beat them up. And uh, they're, they're wrong. Everything about them is wrong. We changed that to non-discrimination now. Gays in the military, I never thought I'd see gay Marines. But mm -hmm. we have seen it, you know, from Harvey's work and my work in San Francisco here. We changed the world. And carrying on the medical marijuana 
it's going to change the world. It has, it has already changed the world, mm-hmm. and it's going to continue to. And we've got to keep it going because uh, you let you let it down and backslide, and people say, "Oh, that that hippie stuff." <laughs> we've got to we've got to prove that it's it's a medicine. We've got to know whether it is a medicine, and we've got to trumpet its causes and trumpet its, its savior. So. That's right. And what you did, let's let's go back to what you did in the gay rights movement, because I've recently, uh, we work with, I'm not going to use his name on the on the air here, but we, we hire a, uh, hired a very powerful federal lobbyist who is a gay man that we work very, very closely with. And uh, he, he calls medical marijuana, he says, you know what, he jumped on this cause, he says he's, medical marijuana is the new gay. Yeah, um, and did it you, is. Do you is. see it that way? Gay, yeah. It's kind of like a, yeah, yeah, because we we stomped on for a long time, and then pretty soon they laughed at us and they they beat us up, and then eventually they'll they'll come with us. And the fellow gay the gay thing there, and they hated us, and then eventually they said, ah, oh, they're not so bad. And then now everyone wants to be gay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, okay. they don't want to be gay. They just want to be. Lifestyle of gay. Absolutely. Well, I, don't, that, I don't really know what that is. Well, well, it's not about stylish and and great taste and, and well, articulate. Well, that you know, but you know, most of my gay friends work in three jobs and they have to pull the apartments in San Francisco, and uh, you know they have they have a tough life like everyone else. Mm-hmm. They work hard and they try to pay the bills and they just to have they go to parties and they party they party on Friday and Saturday nights, and that's why I think people are really talking about the party aspects of gay people that we're always partying well rightfully so life is could be a party that's and, right uh, you know well yeah, gay people like to do it as a as a, as a pastime but and, gay, and street people like to do it too so that's that's the new gay <laughs> come gay just that way well absolutely and you know what i mean who cares the the measure to your happiness isn't in your gay or you're straight no, it's in how hard not. you're smiling my friend so, nice. And and uh, how hard your lips curl to the north is what I like to say a lot of times. It's like you know, all right, never wants to be gay. Oh <laughs> shit! From from hating us, trying to kill us. Now I want to be gay. <laughs> I like that. I like that lifestyle. Yeah, so, and, and that's kind of the, the, the way it is with medical marijuana too. We've seen right wing, Republican, hardcore fundamentalist Christians change right before our eyes um you know begin to come in and say oh okay what's I get the guy's it. name robert pat robertson pat robertson hey, oh, yeah, yeah. Can you, believe that? That. you know think, think about that he was the right wing he's a, you know i don't think he has a brain in his body no now he is now he's for from marijuana Mm-hmm. You know, pretty soon he's going to be gay. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I've watched his show, you know, a few times out of entertainment value, and I, I, think, I, I think he's pretty high anyway. <laughs> I, I, yeah. uh, he may even be gay, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he's a big proponent against uh, against gays, and I, that's oh, usually Oh, God, pretty... yeah, he spent his whole life, his money, got all his money on that. That's a, but, usually yeah, a good yeah. indication. He's getting rid of some marijuana. These things should be legalized. And I'm all for Pat. I am go too. Pat, go. Hey, I'll put a bumper sticker, Pat, on my on my car. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I got a question for you because you, uh, I and I don't mean to stir any fires up here, but you've been um, called out as being, you know, not a proponent for Prop 19. Could you tell us a little bit about why you weren't so excited about that proposition? Well, I, I want legalization. That was not legalization. That was like. Uh, kind of uh, legalization with tr- with all sorts of strings, and uh, you only you limited the amount of marijuana you could grow, you limited the the way you could buy it. It was it was control. These control freaks in life. You know you'll meet them all, all your life. Control this, control that. I don't want to be controlled by control freaks. And that was written by control freaks. We got to tax it. We got to we got to control it because you'll go out of your mind if you don't we don't control it. Hmm. We have done without control for a long time in the marijuana movement. We don't need control. We don't need government control. We don't need any kind of control except self-control. And that's for everyone to decide themselves. Mm-hmm. That's from what you, you set your limits. But that was about control. And I, I'm against this taxing. And somehow, somehow people are thinking that we, if we give them money, they'll stop blushing us. That's wrong. That's wrong. <sighs> To think that it's like buying off the, the bear. Mm. Uh, give mm. the bear food and it won't bust you. No. 
really got to do what's right. Marijuana is a God-saving drug, and we've got to stand up for it. And we don't have to be taxed. You can tax some tax liquor. Oh yeah. Tax the stuff that's going to be really wrong for society. The hamburgers, the greasy hamburgers. Mm. Want to tax something? <laughs> tax them. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. <laughs> My Den- people don't need taxes. Dennis, this is Jesse Stanley. Uh, I got a question for you. That's sort of uh, along the lines of, uh, I guess. People thinking that if you give the government money, that they're going to make it okay. Um, yeah. With what's going on at, uh, I believe it's Harborside. Um, yeah, yes. Steve, Steve's shop. Yeah. How, uh, how, I mean, privy to information are you on that? I mean, are you following that pretty close? Uh, oh yeah, I'm following. You know, I always, I have to, I always knew and tell them all. Oh, I've been telling all these clubs, we have to change the federal law. We've got to do it. We have, we have to have a campaign to change federal law. Instead of just laying on our laurels, we got little, we got Oakland, we got we got this, we got that. We got to change federal law, and I've been active in that. I've I've written every congressman from every state that legalized medical marijuana. I wrote, I told them, explain how you may feel about it. You are our conduit to the federal government. You work for us. You your people have spoken, and uh, and we had a uh, like hundred and forty. Congressman, and we have 140 congressmen. I, I got to admit, California congressman haven't been picked up the ball, mm-hmm. but uh, that that con- that congressman you have from Colorado, mm-hmm. that guy really gave that Tanya or whatever her name is. Yeah, he Did- gave her a licking. Jared Polis, he's a good friend of ours, and he is he is a cre- courageous and very 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 smart, tactful fighter. What a great guy, and uh, he's a he's a great fighter, and I'm glad to have him on our side. You should be very proud of him in Colorado. We we certainly are. Jared is just uh, I mean he's he's the best thing that that's happened to Colorado in a long time. And folks out there in Colorado listening right now, Joe McClosey is also in a close uh, race in Congress um, against a uh, guy named Mike Hoffman, who is an absolute lying Nazi. So those of you that can get out there and vote for Joe McClosey, I'd like to take this time to plug that right now. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and folks, yeah. you know what Dennis just said? He's written every one of brilliant. the, the senators and brilliant. congressmen. So we can sit and we can bitch and we can moan and we can complain about all this stuff, or you can get out and you can tell them because they're your elected official and they work for you, not the other way around. Good point. And remind them that they would be, they, they're <clears throat> their only way we can change federal law is through them. They are a messenger to Washington, and they have to see to our message. Our message is we want to reschedule marijuana. We've got to be done now. And uh, I have a feeling it's very, very close. 190 congressmen. And now they've just been one all just Democrats. There was, there was like 25 Republicans. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's a bipartisan issue. What we need is like 40 more votes. 227 wins. That's as close as we've ever been. Yeah. It's I mean, the closest we've, never... we've ever been. It's the closest we've ever been. <laughs> I think we'll be a little closer, 227. We yeah. can get there this year. Absolutely. Uh, yes, there's a lot of Congress race, congressional races, and a lot of the old guards being turned out. We can turn it around. We can become legalized marijuana this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, believe it. I believe it too, Dennis. I call it the snowball effect. And, yeah. you know, in the, you go back just 12 years in the year 2000, and you ask somebody, hey, would you vote for medical marijuana? The answer would likely in Colorado have been no. Now, even if they're a right-wing, fall-off-the-right-wing Republican Christian, they'll look at it and say, you know, I may not use marijuana, but my, now I know somebody who benefits who, from who it. Uses, yeah. And so that's, that's how we're winning these people over. And I think, Dennis, yeah. th- I think it could be this year. I agree with you, man. It could be, and let me say, really next year because November elections. But uh, sure. we were here to talk about Peter Peter McWilliams. And I want to tell you something about him, uh, because he's the focus of the show. Of the show. I, when our campaign was going in California in '96, he was one of those people that stood up and grew marijuana with uh, Todd McCormick, and they got busted. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened is, um, people don't know it, but. He was very active in the marijuana movement, and he got caught, and he was going to federal judge. The federal judge told him not to smoke pot, but he, in fact, needed to smoke pot to keep his nausea. He was forced not to smoke pot, and then, unfortunately, he died. He died in his own vomit. He, mm. So it was fitting that he would have died that way, but at the same time, I, I believe that judge committed murder. And I believe that's what's happening now. 
and he judged it, ordered people not to fuck marijuana, committing murder. And uh, so I, I want to, Priva has a little mark in history, and he gave his life for what he believed, and marijuana was, marijuana was it. And so I'm memorializing, and uh, I appreciate that him living, and uh, I'm sorry he died. But he, let not his death be in vain. Let's do it to him. That's right. Peter McWilliams, folks, and we're going to be talking to Julie Rose next. And Dennis is absolutely right. Uh, it was it was a uh, it was murder. Uh, what he happened was. to Peter? And but he lives on, guys. He lives on through us. He lives on through Dennis. He lives on through Julia, through all of you uh, who who continue to fight this battle. You know, he wrote that book. Ain't nobody's business if you do. And I don't know if right. anybody's had the opportunity to read that, but um, you <laughs> pick it up. I think he wrote that in what 1993, I believe it was. And uh, this man stood on principles and values, and, and we thank him for that every day. Hey, Dennis, yes. we're, we got we to gotta cut to a break here, but I, uh, I want to tell you what an honor it is to speak to you, and, and I, I appreciate you coming on the show. Can we have you on again sometime in the future? Sure, sure. Well, anytime. Why not? I'm available. So thank you, Jason, for you keeping, up the, keeping the torch alive and keeping passing it on. And uh, I appreciate what you're doing there. And it's good to be on your show. And I'll do it again. Thank you so much, awesome. sir. And thank you for everything you've done. And I look forward to meeting you soon. Have a great okay. evening, sir. And folks, we're going we're gonna to take a, a short break here now. We're going to be back with Julia Rose. And we're going to be talking about Peter McWilliams and his amazing legacy and his amazing story. We're excited for that. Stay tuned to American Weed Realm Radio. The clinic is proud to announce the third annual Clinic Charity Classic Golf Tournament, benefiting the Colorado MS Society. The tournament will be held at City Park Golf Course this coming August 11th. There will be some incredible prizes, including an opportunity to win a trip for two to Hawaii. The trip includes airfare, eight days, seven nights at the Ritz-Carlton Kapalua, including four rounds of golf and $1,500 spending cash. Thanks to the incredible support of Weed Maps, Hetty Glass, Rocky Mountain Hydro, T. Meyer and Stitch, Dixie Elixir, and MMJPrinting.com, we're able to provide awareness to this incredibly difficult condition that so many Coloradans are suffering from. The event will be covered extensively by our favorite industry media outlets, Culture Magazine, The Hemp Connoisseur, Kush Magazine, and of course the amazing people at iCannabis Radio. Please register at theclinicolorado.com or at any of our six convenient locations throughout the Denver metro area. Let's face it, rules and regulations are complicated, especially in the field of medical marijuana. Let Medical Marijuana 101 help you get through the compliance process. We can also explain to you your employment requirements, your employees, and your business. But our work doesn't stop there. Our experience in cultivation ranges from the design of grow rooms to the diagnosis and resolution of grow problems. Visit us at www.medicalmarijuana101.com or call 303-388-7706. That's 303-388-7706. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Run on grass.com. Hi, Josh Stanley here from National Geographic's American Weed. I'm here with my brothers, and we've just recently put together a foundation in Colorado to allow for cancer patients and other patients of debilitating conditions to be able to get a hold of cannabis-based oil that's just about free of charge. I've just about had it with seeing sick patients suffer needlessly just because they can't afford the proper medication. That's what the realm of caring is going to change. Visit therealmofcaring.com. The website will be complete and up on four. 20 of 2012. But until then, please contact any of us Stanley Brothers directly through email. You can get us at gratefuljosh at hotmail.com. Now come on, Colorado. We need to take care of each other. Join the realm. That's realmofcaring.com. Thank you so much. Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack, Suite 110, on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 
California's Attorney General has determined that the Repeal Cannabis Prohibition Act will save hundreds of millions of dollars from our overburdened justice system while creating hundreds of millions in new tax revenues from new sustainable jobs and industries that are friendly to our environment. But we can't do it without your help. We are seeking your donations to get on the ballot. Please go to repealcannabisprohibition.org to learn more about how you can help. It's time to end the war on cannabis and hemp in California. It's time to end the madness. Paid for by Sensible California's Inquiry. The law offices of Vets and Maiden and Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at Warren at Hi, I'm Josh Stanley. And I'm Jesse Stanley. Two of the brothers here from National Geographic's American Weed. And we'd like to invite you to come into our dispensaries in Dispensary in Colorado Springs. Come in for the most pure organic strain selection in Colorado. It's all hand grown by the Stanley brothers, especially for our patients. So come in and visit us at our two locations, East Platte and West Colorado. And remember, always be kind to each other. Welcome back to American Weed Realm Radio. Josh Stanley here, your host, here with the Mustache Man, Jesse Stanley. I'm not going to live the Mustache Man down, I don't think, any time soon. I don't think you are either until you shave it. Shave that, that right on top yeah, of your lip. It's not happening. Um, okay, folks, um, our, we have a next guest here, but I'm going to give you a little bit of background um, on Peter McWilliams and Peter's story here. It is uh, it's just an amazing, compelling story uh, who Peter McWilliams was. Uh, he was a lot of things. He wore a lot of hats. He was an author. He was a publisher. He was a photographer, a poet, an activist, among many other things. And one of the most important things um, that, that he is and continues to be is an inspiration to people. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate what Peter went through, the, the trials and strife, as you heard Dennis mention earlier. But... He, we didn't lose him. He, he, he passed away in the year 2000, which, uh, you know, technically uh, the federal government killed him. And you heard Dennis, he drowned in, in his own vomit because he couldn't have access to his medication. But that's a, Peter's a big reason that we're here today. And, and we're going to hear from Julia Rose. Um, we're going to be, I'm honored to have her, and I'm going to have her tell you about Peter's page and Peter's story and what she does to continue to keep the memory of Peter alive. Julia, do we have you on the, on the phone here? Yes, Mr. Stanley. Well, Mr. Stanley, oh my goodness. No, I don't I, think I've ever heard anybody call you that. You know what? I think I'm going to start making everybody call me Mr. Stanley. That makes me feel real good. Thank you, Julia. No, please. You're welcome, Mr. Stanley. <laughs> you know, you can you can call me Josh or or Ass or you know whatever you whatever you prefer. Um, okay, Mr. Josh. <laughs> Mr. Josh, there you go, honey. It's it's a it's an honor to have you on the show. And um, uh, what I'd like to talk about here, um, obviously, we're here for uh, Peter and Peter's story here. Tell us a little bit about what you started and what you do. Okay, I run org, which I took over from another wonderful person who had run it since Peter died in 2000. Uh, he let me have it, which is really awesome, so I redesigned it last year, and I hope people will go there. Um, I started in 2009 because I heard about Peter through, well, I read his book, you can't afford the luxury of a negative thought. Hmm. And it was so amazing. And I wanted to reach Peter to thank him. And I went online and discovered he died. And um, I cried like for 30 minutes because his words had touched me that deep. And I, it was like I lost the best friend. So I contacted their publishing company. And it turns out I talked to his mama. And <laughs> <laughs> would, wouldn't you know, his mama. And I said, can I please start a tribute for Peter? on my space and she said sure and I don't think she really believed I would <laughs> and then three days later I had this page up and now we get the Facebook page and the dot org and it kind of grew from there you know well it has grown it's grown immensely from there I mean I've just just <laughs> looking at what you've done and seeing all the hits that you've gotten and keeping this memory alive and and it's more than a memory isn't it it's a legacy it's something that gives people hope it's something that gives inspiration because you look at what Peter went through 
and it was yeah. her, it was horrific. And then we look at where we're at today, and we might we wouldn't be here without leaders like this. And that's really what keeps us going, doesn't it, Julia? Yes, sir. It definitely does. Um, I I believe this is a living tribute. It's not something in the past. I get emails from people every single day that say that Peter Peter's words help change their lives, help heal their lives, and. You know, like you said, Peter wore a lot of hats. He was a poet and a self-publisher of over 40 books. Five of them hit the New York Times bestseller list, and he did that all on his own. Well, did, and, did, did, um, would, would, uh, now, that, that's just, that amazes me, okay? Because yeah. is this a true story? And I heard somebody tell me this story about Peter, that he took his one of or a couple of his books to a, a, 15 different publishers and couldn't get anyone to publish it, and then he did it, it himself? It actually 20 publishers. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you were off by five. Uh -oh. And they all said, no, no, Peter, you can't do it. You know, and then he went, and that's the book that became the New York Times bestsellers. You can't afford the luxury of a negative thought. So he really lived those words. He never gave up. And, um, hmm. yeah, in, in um, 1996, Mar March of 1996, that's when he was diagnosed with both AIDS and non Hodgkin's lymphoma. And, um, I just learned this about him, but he didn't just dive into using cannabis. He was kind of cautious about it because he'd, he'd been in this religion for 15 years that preached that marijuana is bad, you know? <laughs> so he, he believed that and he still believed it and he was trying to break from that prejudice, he said. You know, and, um, mm. and so he started using it. And, um, he found that he was able, he used to have really bad nausea. He would be thrown up all day, every day, practically. And he went from staying in bed all day to being able to create on the computer. He actually, he actually learned two different p computer programs, if you'll believe that. And he wrote another bestseller just because he could smoke cannabis. Wow. Um, and before he was just really almost incapacitated, you know. And he became quite the activist in 1997, and of course that's a year after uh, Prop 215 passed, right? And then he, him, and Todd McCormick, they put together a a, a big uh, garden, right? And and, and I yeah. think their, their their purpose wasn't even to go out and sell it and make all this money. It was to to be able to give to people for medication. And then the DEA raided them. Do I have that correct? Yes, it's it's pretty much correct. They really harassed Peter really bad. I mean. They came in, they seized his computers, and they, they, he said they scrubbed them clean, but then he came, they, they came back and his computer had a virus on it, and, you know, they, they literally arrested him in his home, and they threw him in jail for 30 days, and they called him a drug kingpin, and, <laughs> I mean, my goodness, this was just a gentle, kind man. They tried to help people, and they, they're treating him like a criminal. Like, I'm sure you encounter this every single day in your, you know, beautiful work with patients and whatnot. Treated like criminals. It's just so sad. Is it, Julia, let's, let's touch on that for a minute because you just said it. Every day, my brothers and I, we wake up and we dedicate our lives to making oil to get to cancer patients or, or debilitating condition patients or even Dravet children for the non-psychoactive to make the oil to get it to them so it doesn't it doesn't cost them anything we devote our our days to this and every day we get out of bed we have to keep looking over our shoulder and wonder is this is this a day that that we're going to be visited by by authorities and and that is uh, so opposite That's insane. isn't it That's though insane. yeah I mean, it's a natural plant that grows everywhere. Why can't... I mean, I just don't understand that, you know? I mean, <laughs> people are killing themselves smoking cigarettes every single day, you know, or getting drunk driving and killing people on the streets, you know? And yeah. you could still drink legally. You could still smoke legally, but you, you can't have cannabis legally. And it, it's just... It's very heartbreaking. You know, it would be a lot different if we were talking about a plant here that got you high, and and that was it, okay? Um, and it stopped there. There was no medicinal benefit. But we're talking about, folks, we're talking about a plant here that has, uh, it's only second to the palm species in biofuels. You don't have to crop rotate it. It puts nitrogen in the yeah. soil. You can grow a stalk on this plant six inches round in nine months where it takes nine years to grow pine this big. 
Um, it, it stops, it eats cancer cells. It sto- can stop the progression of Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, MS, arthritis, all of these amazing conditions. Even in non-psychoactive CBD form, it stops epilepsy in, in these young children who have uh, the unfortunate uh, uh, epi- uh, Dravet syndrome. Josh, but the, the, the problem with it is is that it causes euphoria, and they don't want anybody being happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, ca- I know. Isn't that amazing? I mean, Peter... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, sweetheart. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> um, Peter was saying that after a while, he wasn't getting high anymore. He wasn't feeling that high effect, but what it does was it soothed him, and he said it didn't necessarily take away all the pain, but what it did was it calmed him so much, it distracted him from the pain. So he was able to focus on a bird singing or, or watching a sunset and um, he said like the first puff you know wasn't so much but the second puff his nausea went totally away and the third puff he noticed a sensation he never had before which was hunger and you know he noticed that his eighth his eighth count in his body totally like evaporated after using cannabis it, it was just remarkable the results he had the, and the results and he, we're seeing today from from AIDS patients that are taking this, yes. and, and even in concentrated oil form, um, we're seeing their counts go down. And, and the more we look into this, Julia, the more they they'd like to put us in orange jumpsuits. I, I just that's just so ridiculous. It's crazy. It's that's criminal. You know they say the word decriminalize. Well, the word criminal. Why is the word criminal still in decriminalize? I you know. Well, it's, well put. You're, yeah, you're still a criminal, and it's just it's just absolutely insane. And Peter would be alive today, I feel, if he was allowed to smoke cannabis. But the federal government stepped in, even after Proposition 215, which Mr. Perone, who I call Grandpa, by the way, <laughs> worked so hard on with Peter and others. And, you know, the federal government just basically thumbed their nose at the state law and said, no, 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 you can't, we can't do this. We're going to jail you, Peter. And if you take cannabis again your mother and your brother will lose their house and this is america i mean and this is folks this is this is not that long ago folks this is this is very recent the federal judge is sentenced peter okay he forbade him to use the marijuana guys this is the truth five days after that he was prohibited from using his medical cannabis peter was found dead five days yes he was yes he was discovered by his housekeeper um, in the bathroom, and you know, some people say he was in vomit, and other people say he had heart complications due to all the nausea. But my goodness, if you're throwing up all the time, you you can't help but have heart problems and any other kind of problem. It's just, mm. it's just so heartbreaking, and and that he had to die, you know. But but people might call him a drug war victim, but I don't think Peter would want to be remembered as a victim. Um, because he was such a warrior. You know, he fought, I believe he fought till the end. He gave it everything he had. And, you know, he tried to have his own medical marijuana uh, magazine online. And he would write people emails, like, all the time about his progress. And if anyone had problems, they could come to him. And he would try to help every single person he could. Yeah, that, and I mean, yeah, well, he, well put, he's Julia. like a criminal, yeah. And he he would not want us to be looking at, at him him like a victim. That is absolutely no. not what what he he was he was a, about passion. He was about love. He was about education, and he never yes. stopped right to the end. And, and folks, when you read the story, and Julia, is, is, is it Peter McWilliams dot org? Is that right? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, I want Definitely. I want to make sure everybody knows that. Okay, I want and, and folks, please go visit the site. Uh, please get you know get involved with this. Uh, it, it's just a, it's an, a very compelling story. And guys, I'm here to tell you this is happening to people all over the world. Okay, what what happened to Peter? Every single day. Every single day, and that's what we need to be cognizant, and that's what we need to be aware of. Um, is what is what's what are we doing? What are we doing? And forget about the fact that this is America, land of the free, home of the brave. We're in this together as a human race. Okay, this is not. This yes. has nothing to do with Colorado. It has nothing to do with the United States. It has everything to do with citizens of humanity. And more and more people are finding out the medicinal cannabis is a, is is a, an amazing answer and an amazing treatment alternative to prescription drugs and medications. There and they're denied it every day. And and every day they're denied it 
They're sicker and they're sicker and they're sicker, and many, many, many die. It's, it's unfortunate. And people like you, Julia, who are helping fight and create this awareness like this are absolutely jewels. And we want to thank you so much for doing what you're doing. Well, I'm, I'm just grateful that you're allowing me to come on here and share a story because it amazes me that so many people in the movement still have never heard of Peter. And when you go to the Seattle Hemp Fest, which I'm so honored to be speaking at this year, when you go to the McWilliams stage, how many people, I wonder, go there and don't even know who McWilliams was, you know, they look at the stage, mm. okay, and they see this, this photo of a beautiful, handsome man, and um, they're actually letting me put a banner up there this year, and the quote on there is, nausea is the unsolved problem of medicine, and marijuana is the finest anti-nausea medication known to science. Mm. Peter said that. <laughs> Amen. And, hmm. Yeah, and we've even got the T-shirt with <laughs> with that on the back of that, and people really relate to that. You know, so many patients come up to me and say, "Wow, that is the statement of my life." Because without cannabis, you know, I would not be able to keep my medications down. <laughs> yeah, uh, Julia, this is Jesse uh, Stanley here. Uh, I, I do have a question for you. I haven't been able to go to the website yet, but uh, one of of all the things that Peter was, uh, and he was a, a very amazing man. He also struggled with depression. Um, yes. What and how are you? Um, do you have a lot of people kind of contacting you about that? Because it, it, I've looked at his, I haven't been able to read his works yet, but his books, you can tell, uh, really uh, kind of hit that topic. And uh, how does how does his, uh, his legacy sort of help other people? I mean, do you have any stories where people contact you that sort of struggle with depression that have used him as an example? Oh, goodness. Thank you so much for asking this question because I feel it's so overlooked a lot. Peter actually had depression since the age of three. He, he himself said that, but he never knew what it was. Mm. So he walked, you know, walked along in his life not even knowing that he had major depression. Mm. And with the help of Harold Bloomfield, um, sorry, truck is passing, <laughs> no, <laughs> who okay. was his um, co-author and therapist at times and friend um, since the 70s, you know, they worked on how to heal depression together. Mm. And Peter found that St. John's wort, another natural healing herb like cannabis, mm -hmm. helped his depression. And he wanted to help others. So they co wrote that book. And I really recommend that book for people struggling with depression. What is, is that book called again? How to Heal Depression. How to Heal Depression. Okay. Yes, and it's still in print. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, so. As far as people contacting me, oh my goodness, I've had people write, write me the most heartbreaking emails. I had this one lady that said that she was going through a divorce and she just wanted to complete suicide. Mm. And Peter's words had touched her so much mm. that she just turned her life around, basically. She went and saw a good therapist and she's still alive because of Peter. And I, I get those stories all the time, mm. you know. From people and it's just remarkable and it's very important to tell people about what he did for depression mm -hmm. as much as he did for the cannabis and I'm so grateful you guys asked that oh my goodness <laughs> yeah. absolutely awesome. I, I think that that is a very uh, <clears throat> it's an unfortunate topic to talk about but there are so many Americans I mean just Americans that struggle with depression and uh, I think it's important for them to have an example of someone that is uh, such an amazing man that struggled with it his whole life, yet um, oh, yeah. still got things done. Was a New York Times bestseller. He wrote author. a book about it. He um, he he faced his depression so head on. So many amazing things that he did. I, it's such a. Uh, I, I know many people that that could use him as an example, and I hope that all that stuff is on the uh, his webpage. Um, and I would hope that our listeners are out there, that if anybody struggles with depression, if you know somebody that struggles with depression, it is not uh, something to just blow off. It is a very, very serious thing. And um, definitely study uh, and, and get to know who Peter McWilliams was. And um, and, and you'll have an example of somebody that, that uh, sort of... Uh, hit his depression head on um, and didn't run from it and uh, that's just a beautiful thing and, and I appreciate you sharing that with everybody out here 
Yeah, oh, yeah, it's, it's definitely important. And yes, it is on PeterMcWilliams.org. And the other thing is, you guys mentioned earlier about gay rights. Well, Peter happened to be gay himself. Mm. And he also struggled with being bullied all throughout high school mm. because he was different and because they sensed he was gay. Mm. So he stood up and he, you know, he he wrote about that subject as well. But, I mean, the, with depression, it's such a stigma as well because, you know, for some reason, people still label you as a nutcase or nuts or, or, or off your rocker. I mean... But, th- but yet they're able to look at diabetes and say, okay, you're not a freak. But if you're depressed, oh, suddenly you're a freak. Because they just don't understand it, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, that, and Julia, you're, you're so right. And, and what happens is in, when people don't understand something, they tend to fear it. And and yeah, with, when you fear when you fear something that creates that these these emotions and it's kind of a fight or flight, mm-hmm. and that's what we see when people you know uh, judge a, a depressed person or a person that uses medical marijuana for example, if it's unknown it tends to be feared and then if it's feared it tends mm-hmm. to be judged, and 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 that's we we have to as humans get away from that type of, of of thinking that's a downward spiral type of a thinking, and 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 even though Peter went through all these types of trials and tribulations. He smiled. He conquered it. He faced his demons yeah. head on, mm-hmm. and he and he and he came and he said, "Bring it on," you know. And and to right yes. to the to the end, he never stopped smiling. He never stopped loving, and he never stopped educating. And folks, that's our call. That that's that that's that's what oh, we yes. are here to do as humans. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> that's oh. just, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, you you just summed it up better than I ever could. Oh, oh goodness. well, well, <laughs> I I just I want to thank you so much for for coming on the show here tonight. Um, we're gonna wrap it up in just a second, Julia. But I, you know, I I, I was looking at a few of the quotes. Peter was so good at, at quotes and getting oh, to the yeah. point on things. And a couple of things things that really touched me here. Uh, I just want to share with you. And these are Peter's quotes. Oh, and great! Joy is a word that I use to describe love. Love is a word that I use to describe joy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that say it right there, folks? I mean, good night. What a man. And then <laughs> and then I'm gonna I'm gonna give another one here. This is this one really t- tickled me death. He said, Why must I always fall for chicken shits and ego <laughs> trips? <laughs> and, and ego trips, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that one from him. I'm gonna have to use I'm gonna use both of them. Uh, Julia, I want to thank you thank so you, much Julia. for coming on the show. Will you come on in the future with us and 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 be a part of oh this again? Oh my goodness, I would love to. I'd be so honored. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you guys are so great. I mean, what you do for the patients and that you care. I mean, I just gosh, just coming through the phone line, I could hear all this caring. You know, <laughs> I can just feel it. You know. It's just amazing. Well, you're making me cry. <laughs> Stop it! You're making me cry. <laughs> oh, you're too sweet. Well, we we've enjoyed talking with you. I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I want to thank you for sending me that T-shirt. I waited till five thirty; it didn't get there, but I'm going to wear it next week. You can bet on it. We'll bring Peter up next week, and we'll have you on the show in the future. Thank you so much, sweetheart. You, Blessings and love to you. Okay. Thank you. I'm sending you hugs. <laughs> All right, honey. Good night. Good night. And, you know, uh, she said, you know, it's the care is what Julia just said. And, and we want to thank her for having on here. And that's what we, that's what it, this is all about, folks. This is the Realm of Caring. Realmofcaring.com. I haven't mentioned that enough tonight. Realmofcaring.com. Guys, Stanley Brothers can't do all this on our own. I say it every week. We, keep, we've, we add three to four new cancer patients or debilitating condition patient a week. And we're trying to, trying to shoulder this on And we want to add own. more. We want to we help as many as we can. The day that we have to turn somebody away is, is we're going to be the worst day of our lives. So please go to realmofcaring.com. Donate what you can. Give what you can. Uh, we, it, it's a 501c3 nonprofit. And we need help. Uh, there's a lot more people out there um, that, that need this medicine. Um, guys, we're going to sign off for the for uh, the night. We have an exciting show for you next week, and we're going to uh, we're going to look forward to seeing you then. Sex Pot Radio is coming up next, so stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, guys, remember it just takes one lighthouse to bring in a thousand ships. Please be that lighthouse. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next week.